If you're watching this video, there's probably a strong chance that drawing hands is a big challenge. And I'm not gonna lie, hands are a bit difficult to, to kind of wrap your brain around. And instead of actually focusing on drawing hands, this particular video is gonna give you some ways of considering how uh, the thumbs should be drawn. So we're gonna take this into sections. And I want you to first of all consider a very simple object here. This looks like a bowling pin. And this is gonna be the basis for which we're gonna go ahead and draw our thumbs. Now the way we're gonna approach this is instead of having two bowed in edges, we're gonna just simply make one edge curved and we'll make the other edge flared out. So this is gonna give us our thumb. And let's just go ahead and put a thumbnail in so that you can see how that works. Now, the thumb is asymmetric, so what does that mean? Well, symmetry means that you can take an object and you can literally divide it equally in half and have it fold on top of one another. Now, the thumb that I've drawn on the right is asymmetric, which means that if I draw a line somewhere down below, you cannot fold the left over the right. So, that's gonna be an important consideration when you're drawing anything in the body. There's usually, uh, you know, when you're drawing limbs and when you're drawing uh, thumbs and fingers and toes, there will be asymmetry uh, going on. So let's take this idea or this approach and let's build on it. So what if we added a little bit of a rotation to the base and add a little bit of a bend? So we have a thumb that's at an angle. And the joint here that's responsible for bending the thumb is going to be somewhere in the middle. And I'm just dividing it into sections so that you can see how that works. Or you can always stick the thumb out. Now, generally speaking, these proportions, you know, they're not set in stone. Uh, you can always vary the, the proportions, but if you look at the two joints, they're roughly about the same uh, length, right? So how does this apply to drawing female thumbs, right? Or more feminine thumbs? Well, same idea still works here. So if we go back to our bowling ball or bowling pin analogy and apply this to a feminine thumb, what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna sharpen up that edge, right? So we have asymmetry here, here's the nail. And we can see that we've got pinch and we've got stretch happening here. So it's asymmetric. So let's go ahead and put that one through its paces. And I realize this is more of a simplified approach, but you know, there is a beauty to simplicity because if we understand it in its simplest context, then we can start layering it up with things that are a little bit more difficult. And I know hands have been kind of a tricky thing for people to draw. So, you know, I get that. And what I want to do now is I want to show the context of how the thumb fits in with the palm. So let's talk about that. The palm, I want you to just visualize it as kind of a trapezoidal shape. This is the top part and this is the bottom part. And our thumb, or bowling pin in this particular case, right, will emanate from the lower uh, section of this palm. So we can go ahead and draw the thumb right here. And I'll do a few more examples. And I know there are different positions of the palm, but again, let's take it simple. So we have the base of our bowling pin, and we have our thumb. If we wanted to go ahead and curl the thumb inward, I'll do a more feminine thumb, so we can have this thumb go up, and we can make it more pointy, right? Now, if you were to 
uh, we're looking at the palm directly, but if you look at the front or the top part of the hand, let's consider what the thumb looks like in that context. So we have our base, and then we have our point if we're doing something more feminine. If we want to do something that's a little bit more masculine, and this time I'll just go ahead and put the thumb on the opposite side just for giggles. So definitely practice that as you start to come to grips with drawing hands. Uh, obviously the other fingers make the hand a lot more interesting to look at and that's something I definitely want to tackle in upcoming videos. But I thought we'd just start with simple basics. So if you're struggling with drawing hands, stick with me over the next few videos and uh, I will help demystify drawing hands. So thanks so much for watching this. I hope you found some value. I'll see you in the next video.